So that is written in stone and will, cannot change uh, under the uh, zoning ordinance. Unless you came back and amended it. Unless you came back and amended it. But you'd have to go through all of this process. Yeah. But, uh, you know, that's why we're here today. That first is the process. Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. So this week I did something that some would call absolutely crazy. I flew over 4,000 miles to speak for three minutes. Now, before we get too far into it, I want to explain to my subscribers who may not know, Cletus McFarland bought this racetrack maybe a couple years back now and has been producing absolutely amazing content that helps really support power sports and everything that uh, I truly believe in. So this all came about Tuesday night. I'm sitting on the couch watching YouTube with my wife as I usually do. My daughter had gone to bed and I come across a Cletus McFarland video you tell me if you'll be able to hear those race cars with, with a 25-foot fence. The request before you today is a large-scale comprehensive plan map amendment. To give you guys a little bit of context, this is the future development area boundary right here, this purple line. So development's supposed to be within that. These people are planning on building 4,500 homes outside of the urban boundary line. And this is the racetrack right here. Any of you are welcome to come to the Manti County Administrative Center this Thursday, December 15th at 9 a.m. Now our goal here is to show up and show how many people support the racetrack. We want to respectfully oppose this application. Once it makes it past the Board of County Commissioners and it goes to the state, we're in trouble. New neighbors move in, complain about the noise until the track can't operate at normal times. People stop showing up the track closes. Now, first I wanna say, I understand a lot of people are not able to do this, which is why I did it. I have a job where I work remote. I can work from an airplane. Things that a lot of people probably can't do, I was able to do. And my calendar just happened to kind of align to allow this to happen, to go work remotely elsewhere. So I just kind of jokingly said to my wife Tuesday night, uh, I, I should fly out there. And she was like, yeah, go for it. Next thing you know, I'm on my way to Bradenton, Florida to voice my opposition. Now coming from construction and in previous employment, having to go through some zoning things, when I saw the plot of land that this person is proposing to build uh, 4,500 homes on, abutting right up to the racetrack, they kind of lit a fire in me because I've been in some of those conversations with property owners about maybe a conflict with a neighbor and posturing where, hey, don't worry about it. As long as we can get this through the board, everything else will fall in line after that. And that's what I saw with that, that map. So coming back to why I flew out there, here I am now, a power sports enthusiast, racing enthusiast, YouTuber who also has some construction experience. And I felt like I had to be in that room. Uh, it was just something that I felt wasn't even really an option. I wanted to be there for the 15,000 people who were on the Manatee County live stream as this was going on, which I don't think any government meeting gets 15,000 viewers live watching. So this was my three minute pitch that I had to the board in opposition to moving forward with this project. I'm a resident of Maricopa County, which is in Phoenix. And yes, I flew all the way here specifically for this. I wanted to uh, come out here specifically to kind of make a mention that I saw in the news yesterday that a uh, local news channel said that local race uh, enthusiasts were worried about this. And this is far reaching. This goes way beyond the county. Uh, the YouTube channel that, that promotes the content out of this racetrack reaches 20 million people a month. So out of curiosity, I looked up the Visit Florida YouTube channel last night and it was astounding. 16 years, they have amassed 40 million views. This track is generating that in two months. So that is bringing people from outside of Manatee County to this community on a daily basis. So not only are you, you uh, potentially by pushing this through, preventing that from continuing on after we all know what the end result of this is gonna be, you're not just affecting local, you're affecting people not just even across the country. It's, it's worldwide at this point. So what I would r request is if this does manage to get to that point where it gets pushed uh, forward, is what is the economic impact of that reach. So if there's going to be considerations about uh, economics, I think that if you're gonna forward this to the state, they should probably look long and hard at the amount of money and time that they invest in really unsuccessful reach uh, outside of, of the state. Um, certainly very relevant. Now, the other part of this is I come from construction, I've spent plenty of time 
coming up with beautiful site plans to present to folks like yourselves to get through a certain step. So as I heard earlier, there's already some noise ordinances in place. And guess what? Nobody calls and complains because if a tree falls in the woods, does anybody hear it sort of thing? So if I was in this situation where I was trying to present you guys with a site plan, I would basically say, let's just get this thing through and move on. But I wouldn't do it with an 85 foot reach to the nearest boundary. I would have tried to push that thing back and say, let's just try to get within like a few hundred feet. And then once the people move in, they'll call, complain about the noise. The track will be gone in no time. Don't worry about it, owner. You'll have no, nothing to worry about. That's what I'd be doing. And it seems to me like this site plan is beyond not in good faith. It's, it's an aggressive approach to show you what is a sign of time to come. So the last thing I'll mention is I heard you guys say earlier, once you guys approve something as the government, you can't walk it back. You've already committed to somebody. So it, to hear you guys say you're just going to kind of push this through to the transmit stage, not to worry about it like it's just going to make it through to the state and then it's on them. Well, once it gets back here, you've already said in some earlier conversations about some other things that we're discussing is, well, we can't walk it back. So that's the one thing I take away from this is the commitment from you guys to say once you vote something through, there's really no walking it back. That was in conversation earlier today. So I'm good. Thank you. So when I got to Tampa and subsequently finished out my workday from airplanes and the airport, I drove out to Bradenton Motor Sports Park, uh, Freedom Factory. It was after dark, so at this point the day's already over. I wasn't expecting any events, but what I wanted to do was just get a better lay of the land, understand what I was dealing with, because at the end of the day, it's easy to hear acres and thousands of homes, but it's really hard to put into context until you could really put it to scale uh, yourself. When I got out there, I was pleasantly surprised to see a drag event on a random Wednesday afternoon. So I parked out here. I was about right at this entry gate. So a thousand feet off, there was a home that they had mentioned that would be within a, a few hundred feet. Okay. 300 feet. 300 th to the, to, from the property staff. line to the track, according to staff, is 300 feet. Okay. Plus, we'll have that 84 foot, about 400, Sizes are. 400 plus feet. So they have a 25 foot wall on a berm, which is going to be intended to block that sound. This is what the sound sounds like when you're a thousand feet away. <laughs> The following day, I drove back out and I parked a mile and a half away. This would be the westernmost part of the development. So I wanted to get a grasp of like, what's the best case scenario if you had a property right out on the west side of this, which by the way, they're currently actually developing the land over here. And I will tell you that even as a power sports fan, I don't know how many people would want to live much closer than where this is currently being developed now. This was still significant noise. Now, not nearly as much, but if you had a property somewhere in the middle of this whole development, somewhere maybe around this, this lake here, it is going to be miserable. I fear coming from construction, knowing how some of this stuff works, is that you put together a site plan, which I, I already have suspicions now. Uh, I want to be very clear. This is all speculation at this point, but this is, this is my thought process. If I was in a hypothetical scenario where I was proposing a development here, I would pretty much say, look, it's going to be a few years of battle. We just need to get this through the board at this point to start building these homes. There's already noise ordinances on the books. And once we start complaining, they're going to have to reduce the hours of the track. So you get it through, just, just get it through. That's, that's my thing. Just get it through the board. Instead of ripping off a mandate, we take small little bites until we eat the whole elephant. This 1.95 is, is permanent on this site. Once this comp plan is transmitted and approved, correct? Uh, yes, so we have that is written into the comprehensive plan. So that is written in stone and what cannot change uh, under the uh, zoning ordinance. 
amended. Unless you came back and amended it. How close is the near, how close will the nearest home be, your best guesstimation, to where the track sits today? According From the to property the line to the track, according to staff, is 300 feet. Okay. Plus, we'll have that 84 foot. Plus the buffer, buffer. plus. Basically, the houses aren't going to butt right up to the buffer. Plus the rear yard going to be some spacing so there too, right? So probably about 400. Sizes are 400 plus feet. It's a shot across the bow of the fight to come, in my opinion. Furthermore, it was exposed very recently that this development now also has additional development that they're trying to pitch to the south of the Freedom Factory, so much is actually surrounding it to the east. So basically the whole Freedom Factory will now be surrounded by homes. That is horrible. All of those residents who are moving in very likely will be presented with, the track is there, this is part of your agreement, and fine, it'll all be signed, whatever the case may be. But once you have 4,500 residents that are uh, taken up here, and then another several thousand that are taken up over here. Now what happens is that whole meeting at Manatee County, the future meeting, is not going to be a room full of race enthusiasts fighting a developer. It is going to be a room of 4,500, maybe 6,500 residents against a track owner and maybe tens of thousands of emails. Those emails, nowhere near as powerful as a bunch of angry residents standing outside demanding the politicians that they have voted in to take action against the track that is bothering them. I am actually going to do a site plan for this. I'm not gonna, I was just thinking about this now. I'm not going to make a video that's 45 minutes long with me proposing the, the new site plan for this development, but I will come up with what I think is reasonable because honestly, it's inevitable. There's probably going to be building on this land. The way that these, uh, board members really tipped their hat was we can't tell them they can't build on their property. Cletus had a very powerful moving statement about compatibility of use. If I came to you commissioners today and asked you to rezone some of my land to build two massive loud racetracks right next to 4,500 homes that stood there for 50 years, would you approve it? And if the answer to that is no, then this is not a compatible use of the land. That is all I have to say. I want my son to own this racetrack one day. Don't let my racetrack die. So there's going to be a bit of a squabble, I think, coming up in the future about where that compatibility starts and stops. It is certainly not to within a couple hundred feet of the drag strip. And I also don't think on the other side that it's within the whole property should not be uh, buildable. I don't think you can tell this landowner that they cannot build anything on their property that is that large. So there's going to have to be a middle ground and I am going to do a video of what I think that middle ground really should be in order to truly protect the future of that track. It's something that has to be done. So with that guys, I just wanted to make a video about this. I think this is something I will talk about. What I see happening here in the near future is that Cletus McFarland will take his foot off the throttle on his social media reach because I think if he stays on it too much, it might reflect negatively on him as the property owner in this battle. But I do think that it's very important to produce content that keeps this in the narrative because if it falls out of the narrative, what'll happen is my fear is that it builds homes up to this the Freedom Factory. It eventually shuts down, and it costs the future. This is my six-year-old daughter's helmet uh, behind me here, and I think that it, it's, it's more important to the future generations of racing and what Cletus McFarland provides to the community as a whole and the youth of the community as well. I'll just leave it at that for now. I'm very proud that I went out there. Ultimately, not sure that I needed to, but again, very proud that I did because this is something that I think is is far, far more important than a local county issue in Florida. Please support this whole initiative. I would ask the emails probably still keep floating into Manatee County. 
voicing opposition and concerns to this project as a whole so that people understand that this issue is a, truly an economic issue for Manatee County. So I will link all the information to those people in the, the description down below to where you can send those emails, please. Uh, I just think keeping those going is, is important. It's important. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, please hit that subscribe button down below. Remember, likes go a long way to support the channel. See you guys next time.